Hi gang, welcome to another adventure with Erie, Florida, although we are not uh, actually going to be talking Erie, Florida today. My second home uh, was growing up in the woods of Kentucky, so I uh, have a fondness for the Kentucky Derby and some of the traditions around that, and one of the most important traditions for proper Kentucky Derby is the mint julep, and there is a classic just amazing letter that was written by Lieutenant General Simon Boulevard Buckner Jr., a graduate of West Point uh, who was killed in Okinawa in 1945, who was the son of uh, another General Simon Boulevard Buckner of the Confederate Army who surrendered Fort Donelson to General Grant. Um, anyway, this Lieutenant General wrote a letter to Major General William D. Connor, who was the superintendent of the United States Military Academy at West Point, and this letter is dated March 30th, 1937. Apparently, the Buckners were known for making mint juleps at West Point, and the superintendent wanted this secret recipe on how it was done. So here's the letter, and forgive me if I adopt a bit of a southern drawl as this goes on, because it's just the only way to make this sound perfect. So here's the letter describing the mint julep recipe. My dear General Connor, your letter requesting my formula for mixing mint juleps leaves me in the same position in which Captain Barber found himself when asked how he was able to carve the image of an elephant from a block of wood. He said that it was a simple process consisting merely of whittling off the part that didn't look like an elephant preparation of the quintessence of gentlemanly beverages can be described only in like terms. Mint julep is not a product of a formula. It is a ceremony and must be performed by a gentleman possessing a true sense of the artistic, a deep reverence for the ingredients, and a proper appreciation of the occasion. It is a rite that must not be entrusted to a novice, a statistician, nor a Yankee. It is a heritage of the Old South, an emblem of hospitality, and a vehicle in which noble minds can travel together upon the flower-strewn paths of a happy and congenial thought. So far as the mere mechanics of the operation are concerned, the procedure, stripped of its ceremonial embellishments, can be described as follows. Go to a spring, where cool, crystal-clear water bubbles from under the bank of dew-washed ferns. In a consecrated vessel, dip up a little water at the source. Follow the stream through its banks of green moss and wild flowers until it broadens and trickles through beds of mint growing in aromatic profusion and waving softly in the summer breeze. Gather the sweetest and tenderest shoots and gently carry them home. Go to the sideboard and select a decanter of Kentucky bourbon, distilled by a master hand, mellowed with age, yet still vigorous and inspiring. An ancestral sugar bowl, a row of silver goblets, some spoons and some ice, and you're ready to start. Into a canvas bag, pound twice as much ice as you think you will need. Make it fine as snow and keep it dry and do not allow it to degenerate into slush. Into each goblet, put a slightly heaping teaspoonful of granulated sugar. Barely cover this with the spring water and slightly bruise one mint leaf into this, leaving the spoon in the goblet. Then pour elixir from the decanter until the goblets are about one-fourth full. Fill the goblets with snowy ice, sprinkling in a small amount of sugar as you fill. Wipe the outside of the goblets dry and embellish copiously with mint. Then comes the delicate and important operation of frosting. By proper manipulation of the spoon, the ingredients are circulated and blended until nature, wishing to take a further hand and add another of its beautiful phenomena, encrusts the whole in a glistening coat of white frost. Thus harmoniously blended by the deft touches of a skilled hand, you have a beverage 
eminently appropriate for honorable men and beautiful women. When all is ready, assemble your guests on the porch or in the garden where the aroma of the juleps will rise heavenward and make the birds sing. Propose a worthy toast. Raise the goblet to your lips. Bury your nose in the mint. Inhale a deep breath of its fragrance and sip the nectar of the gods. Being overcome with thirst, I can write no longer. Sincerely, Lieutenant General S.B. Buckner, Jr., Class 1906. Anyway, I thought you'd all enjoy that. I enjoyed it very much. And being overcome with thirst, I think I'm going to end it here. We'll see you next time on Erie, Florida.